Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash entitled people, where people truly believe that they're the center of the universe and that nobody in this world matters. And in this episode, guys, oh boy, Karens are getting taught lessons. And OP's nasty old granny calls 911 on him and it backfires so hard. I hope you enjoy the stories today. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here. Let's dive in. So briefly during the pandemic, I worked as a manager at a Ralph's, which is a New York City ice cream chain. And one night, as I'm helping out scooping, I can hear a customer getting annoyed at the walk-to window. She's starting to get snippy with one of the young kids who was working the window. The woman is mad, and I kid you not, because the hot fudge on her hot fudge sundae is hot, and she's screaming at me that it's gonna melt the ice cream too fast. So I explained to her that hot fudge is indeed served hot, but she insists that it's not. Now, I don't want to argue with this woman, so I make her a new sundae with a magic shell topping instead, and let her keep the hot fudge one. By the time I return with that, this customer's stirring her spoon through another cup of ice cream that she's ordered, obviously about to complain about that one. The woman tells me that the flavor she ordered was called Graham Crunch, and then she proceeded to tell me that there wasn't any crunch in it, that she orders this flavor all the time, and she knows I'm intentionally stiffing her. So I tell her that this is how the ice cream is, and I don't name or make the ice cream, but the woman's not having it. As the manager, she wants me to fix it, or she'll be calling my manager. We've got some crushed graham cracker topping in the back, so as she's berating me, I just walk away from her, grab the entire container, and come back to the window with it. At this point, we've got a long line of people, practically a block long because this lady's held us up, so there's a lot of witnesses to what I was about to do. Without breaking eye contact with her, as she continues to scream at me that I'm wrong about the ice cream that I happen to scoop six days a week, I open the lid of the container and empty the entire thing over her cup of the offending ice cream. At this point, graham crackers are everywhere and her ice cream is now definitely crunchy. The lady loses her mind at this and she starts yelling at me that she knows the owner and today is my last day of working here. To which I tell her, yeah, Steve's a nice guy. And she responds with, well, I've known Steve a long time. To which I respond, well, the owner's actual name is John. Now get out of here and don't bother my employees for free ice cream again. Now, sufficiently embarrassed in front of the long line of customers, the lady leaves in a huff, and indeed, she never returns. The next few customers left us $20 tips in the jar to make up for her. So the kids who worked for me left with quite a bit more in their pockets than they normally would. Guys, I love stories like this where managers have their employees' backs when it comes to rude, demanding customers. And also, the Steve John name switch up is genius. Like, I'm always so impressed at people's abilities to think so quickly on the spot like that. And this person shares their experience and says, I had a manager like this once. She had no tolerance for customers abusing team members. I will never forget the time that she was summoned to deal with this unruly customer. She was mixed race in her early 40s and had tattoos. The customer said to her, you can't be the manager. And she replied, what specifically about me makes you think I can't be the manager? And for some reason, that customer couldn't think of one thing. It was amazing. So I'm a hairstylist, and last Wednesday, between clients, I decide to run to the gas station to get an energy drink, and I was hit by a car coming out of the parking lot. My own car was totaled, the cops had to come, and both cars were towed from the scene. I text my next client, apologizing and telling her that due to a serious accident, I would need to reschedule her appointment. She replied that she needed her hair done for the next day, no excuses. So there I was, standing in the street, looking at my car in pieces, on the phone with insurance, fielding questions from the cops, and still texted the salon owner, asking if anyone could take my client today. The owner said she'd figure it out, and she would make sure my client could still be seen. I passed this info on to the client, who said she only wanted me to do it, and she needed me to come in as soon as possible. So in the midst of this, I'm still worried about this client, who by the way is a bad client. She constantly complains about her hair, demands free redos, and only pays about 70% of the typical cost of her services, because she managed to manipulate me into that price point when I was a newer stylist. So with that, I walked back to the salon after my car was towed away, and just took her in anyway. 
Once I get in, she doesn't even ask if I'm okay. She doesn't thank me for taking her anyway, but instead, she launches into a three hour long brag about all the guys who were super into her and how she's dating a business mogul from Newport. The service goes as usual. I finish her hair three hours later, and I'm about to take her cape off and send her on her way, when suddenly she has a problem with the color. She says it's too ashy. It's the exact same formula and color that I've done for her for years, but today it's the wrong color for some reason. So trying to remain cheerful and professional, I tell her that I'll put a new toner on her. No problem. At this point, my grandma's on her way with my daughter to pick me up. I text my grandma saying that I'll be a little later. I tone the client again and I blow dry her for a second time. The client insists that the color is still wrong. I then explain that the second toner I used is the most golden toner that exists, and there's nothing less ash that I could put on her, except for an opaque, sort of gold pigment, and she's clearly being a sadistic bitch. At this point, my grandma comes into the salon, and asks if I'm ready to go. My client looks at my grandma, and she says, You need to go do something else. She's busy right now. I can't leave like this. So my grandma goes back to wait in the car. And after being so rude to my grandma, I decide to use a very, very gold color and tone it again for the third time. So she comes back to the chair and her hair is noticeably less ashy because it's practically orange. She then says to me, I hate this. I'm going to dinner with the guy from Newport tonight. I liked it better the first time. You need to do something else. Just do it like you did it the first time. I say to her, I've done your hair three separate times at this point, packing my stuff up. And as you know, my grandmother and daughter have been outside waiting for me. Unfortunately, there's nothing else I can do, since now there's layers of toner on there, and a fourth layer is only going to make it worse. I hope you have a great week. I then took her payment, which she scoffed and forcefully handed to me, and I left. It was maybe not my most professional moment, but I'd been looking for an escape from that client for years, and it was well worth it because she never came back. Yeah, there is nothing wrong with saying no to a client and just leaving it at that, guys. Like, if she was that bad of a client to begin with, who cares, right? OP should have dealt with her car accident and nothing else that day because there was no reason to rush to work to deal with a nasty Karen like this. And honestly, I'm actually surprised the lady did pay up and she didn't try to get cops involved, unlike the Karen in this next story. So this happened a few years ago. I was a bouncer at a very busy local bar, and it was my job to cut people off and or bounce them if needed. I was in the process of cutting off a regular, and she became very belligerent. This girl was apparently very wealthy, and she always acted like she owned the place whenever she was there with her friends. Anyways, since this was also a karaoke bar, she happened to be called to the stage while I was in the middle of cutting her off. So she marches past me, and she stumbles onto the stage. I have the karaoke host cut her music off and go on to the next singer. I then go to the stage and escort the lady off, and to be clear, I did not touch her at this moment. I'm a broad, 5'9 woman, and my boots add about an inch and a half, so this very short woman complied rather easily, until she continued to argue with me after the fact. The woman did not want to leave, she wanted to go back and sing her song. I kept trying to get her away from the stage, and she ends up punching me in the face. I then put my arms around her, picked her up, and head towards the front door. At which time, she grabs the protective glass cover on the host stand, and she shatters it on the ground. Once she was outside, she was yelling and screaming that I assaulted her, and she threatened to quickly call the police to have me arrested. That's when I grabbed a business card for her and said, Our address is on the card. Just make sure that you call the cops to the right place, okay? The cops end up arriving, and they asked me who they needed to address. They arrested her. I'm certain they just put her in the drunk tank for the night. Oh yeah, the only thing worse than an entitled Karen is a drunk entitled Karen. Like, in what world did she live in where she gets to punch someone in the face, destroy store property, and then have the audacity to call the cops? Like, how did she think this was gonna go? And this person shares their similar story and says, This reminds me of the time my husband and I went to our local pub on a night there was dancing. Well, this guy starts dancing all over me, and then he slapped my butt. I stopped and said, Don't touch me, and then moved away. Well, the dude slaps me again, so I decked him, knocking him into a booth. I then went to the bouncers, let him know what happened, and the guy calls the cops on me. So there I am, outside, 5'4", wearing a dress, waiting for the police to show up. 
The officers couldn't keep the smiles off their faces as I explained what happened and then they asked me if I wanted to press charges. Meanwhile, the dude I decked was standing on the other side of the building, blubbering about being hit. We're regulars to the pub and the whole staff got a kick out of it. This is absolutely amazing, and this is how you deal with idiots like that, with a nice swift whack to the face. Like, I'm just surprised he called the cops after what he did. Like, did you not realize what you did, sir, that led to you getting hit? Clearly not, and I hope OP went through with those charges because some people gotta learn the hard way, don't they? So here's a little background. I used to live with my grandmother shortly after I graduated college and my mom died. My grandmother has a tendency for treating anyone living with her like her personal slave. So grandma comes to me one morning while I'm on my laptop asking if I'll trim the neighbor's bush. This is so she can see down the street and it's currently blocking her view. I explain multiple times that it's on their property and she needs to talk to them about it. At that, she tells me they won't mind, and I ask to get them on the phone to confirm, but she doesn't want to disturb them. We go back and forth for a good bit while she calls me lazy and entitled. After about 30 minutes, she threatens to call the cops to take me to jail for being disobedient, and I wish her the best of luck, and I go outside to clean my car and breathe since I'm obviously not getting anything done inside. But what got me really nervous is she said something along the lines of, I can tell the police anything and they'll believe a little old lady over a young disrespectful punk like you. I planned on leaving, but I didn't want to look like I was fleeing in case she actually called them. About 15 minutes later, two cop cars show up and I just roll my eyes. Two officers go inside and one is standing outside talking to me. I calmly explain my side of the story. As for grandma, apparently, she's inside giving them this erratic tale, claiming she's being emotionally and physically abused. I asked the police to explain the abuse accusations, and I was told that I'm emotionally abusive because I'm quiet and I keep to myself. Again, my mom just died. And the physical abuse was a small bruise on the back of her arm, above the elbow. The cop talking to me laughed it off, saying that looks more like she bumped into something and this is the first time he's gotten a call for someone being too quiet. I think the cop who talked to me first could tell what I was dealing with and he remarked how exhausted I looked. He told me they're writing it off and advised I stay somewhere else for a few days. He told me he's dealt with calls like this before, explaining it's people who want to complain and others caught up in the crosshair. Surprisingly, she hasn't even mentioned the bush. Her list of grievances hasn't got there yet. The two other cops had left, and the one who talked to me gave her a big lecture on how she's only allowed to trim things on her property, and that you're not allowed to trespass on someone else's property to cut things down or trim bushes. He also told her some stories about some serious altercations he's had to deal with. I'm sure he was giving me ample time to pack up, while also probably venting about this non-issue. I walk out with the officer and she seems to think that they're taking me to jail. And she smirks at me saying, I told you. The officer is making sure that I have everything, including my car keys and a safe place to go. He also gives me his card, just in case I need help in the future or just need to talk. As I'm leaving, I hear her asking the officer if they'll let me out of jail on Monday because she needs me to run errands for her. And the cop is like, um, I don't know when he'll return, but you wanted him out, so we're working on that. The cop is smiling, but he's giving off a lady, that's your problem vibe. I stayed with my girlfriend for at least a week while getting multiple voicemails each day from my grandmother asking if and when I'm coming home. Guys, I hope that OP never returned home after that and that the neighbors never trimmed that annoying bush. But with that said, what an evil grandma though. Like who calls the cops on their own grandson for refusing to do something that's illegal and then has the nerve to smirk at him when he's being taken away. And as for OP replying to the voicemails grandma's been leaving, I would have left one voicemail before blocking her saying, hey, you wanted me jailed. And by the way, grandma, thanks to you, they're giving me the electric chair tomorrow. I hope you're happy. That'll learn her. So over the years, I've noticed that the worst culprit for entitled people are usually family members, especially the random ones who you are sort of related to, but you know deep, deep down that you really don't know each other all that well. This incident actually occurred quite a long time ago, over 10 years ago, and I've almost forgotten about it until someone reminded me about it the last weekend. 
So way back over 10 years ago, I got a promotion to a new role, and I bought some new tools, including a new Apple MacBook for work. I was living in London at the time, and I was living in a small apartment, which meant the space was a premium. So I decided that I should get rid of some stuff in the house. One of those was a PC that was a few years old at the time. Back then, my grandma used to call me up every few days just to chat about stuff. And I mentioned to her about the promotion and the new stuff I bought, and the old stuff I'm giving away. And being the old lady, whose hobby was to basically phone call everyone in the family, she passed this news on to a few relatives. One of my aunts heard the news and told her younger kid. A few days later, my aunt and her kid calls me up and said, Great, they'll take my computer. And I'm thinking, great, come to my place and collect the computer. They drove over the next day, and then that turns into a long argument with me once they arrived. For some reason, they thought that they were picking up my brand new MacBook instead of a few years old desktop. My aunt, being an adult, was at least understanding that it must have been a miscommunication. My little cousin, however, was throwing a huge tantrum in my house. He kept going on about how crap the specs of the machine is, and how it would be useless to him, and how he couldn't play video games on it. My cousin is 13. My aunt was trying to get the computer out of my place, and I just wanted to get them and the computer out of my house. But my cousin wouldn't stop crying until he got my new laptop. At the end, they left. Empty-handed, of course, since the kid doesn't want my crap PC. And I wasn't ready to give him my new one. Now I thought that was that, but then, later that night, my uncle, the entitled one of the story, called me up and he demanded an explanation of why I backed out on this deal, and what I did was not the way to treat family. And if I don't give it to him, I can consider myself not a part of their family. The phone call ends with me hanging up on him, which led to a lecture from my grandma the next day over the phone, and took me an hour to explain what happened. That, of course, led to a lecture from her to my uncle, which led to more phone calls from my uncle and an argument. My uncle complained that his son has no computer to use, and I told him that he can still pick up my computer which is still sitting at my house the entire time. I didn't get an answer until two days later. My uncle sends me a list of things he wants me to upgrade before giving it to his son. The computer that I'm planning to give away, and he wants me to do it with my own money. Obviously, I just ignored them at the time. My family's very gossipy, so very soon, everyone was on me about not giving a 13-year-old my new MacBook. And what happened to the computer? Well, I ended up giving it to a neighbor on the same floor, whom I've talked to a few times. They were in a less fortunate position than us, and their two teenage children at the time used to use computers at the school or library for their homework. Once I found out about that, I figured that that's the best place to send my computer to. At first, they refused it because they couldn't give me money for it. But we're not looking to take any money because A, it wasn't worth all that much anyway, and B, it was much, much easier to bring the damn thing across the hall than anywhere else. They were our neighbors for a few more years before I moved away from the block. I didn't think very much of what happened to it anymore until recently when I was contacted by the older one of the two children. Apparently, he's just graduated from university and just started a job. We talked about a few things, and he thanked me again for giving them the computer all those years ago. Apparently, it's still being used by their parents at their home. I'm pretty sure my uncle and cousin have still not forgiven me for not giving them a MacBook, though. Guys, I am so glad OP gave his old computer to a family that needed it, instead of the entitled cousin. See, that's the thing with entitled family members, guys. Like, some people think that just because they're family, that they can harass other family members, and that they deserve special treatment or outrageous demands like this. Like sending a list of upgrades that OP should make before giving away his old computer to them. With that said though, I know OP doesn't keep in contact with uncle or cousin anymore, but wouldn't it be funny if he just gave them the MacBook now, like 10 years later? Like just wrap it up and be like, hey, you remember that brand new MacBook you wanted so badly? Well, here it is. Merry Christmas, 10 years later. Okay, so this year, I went to my fiancé's house for Christmas. It was my first time going, as we would typically go to my family's house instead. I got a rather pricey gift from my fiancé, Dan, related to his hobbies. I also got nice gifts for Dan's parents, based off of things we talked about with them before. And I also got a small pack of chocolates for each of Dan's other relatives that I didn't know very well. 
Now, I wasn't expecting many gifts from Dan's relatives because I didn't know many of them that well, but I was certainly expecting more than I got. And I know it sounds entitled, but bear with me. At first, I was excited when I saw that there was a big pile of gifts for me. However, once I opened the first one, it was just a piece of coal. Everyone laughed, and I just kind of laughed along, thinking it was a gag gift, and that the other gifts would be different. But every single one turned out to be coal, all 18 of them. I started to get upset, so I cried and I lashed out at Dan. But he calmly explains that this is a long-standing tradition in his family, where they gift coal to newcomers who are celebrating Christmas with them for the first time. He explained that it's much easier that way since all the relatives who might not know the newcomer well don't have to stress about finding a gift. And it's a fun experience for the newcomer as well. I then told Dan that I can't believe I skipped my own family celebration for this and I left. But now, Dan and some of his family are blowing up my phone saying that I embarrassed him in front of his relatives and that I made it awkward for everyone. So am I the a-hole and being entitled over this? Listen guys, I don't think OP is the a-hole for this, and I couldn't imagine being in her shoes, guys. Where people are just laughing at me while I open 18 freaking presents, and all of it is coal. So I can see why she cried and was so upset about it. Again, I would be too, guys. Like, if I skipped my parents' Christmas party, all to be a part of some tradition where I get humiliated, it's not a good feeling. And guys, the part that really gets me is her fiancé knew she had thoughtful presents for everyone, and yet he still went along with it. Like, even though it's family tradition, I would have at least gotten her something at the end of those 18 gag presents. But guys, let me know what you think. I don't think OP is the entitled a-hole for wanting at least one present. I think at least one present is fair. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss future stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode where Karens are running amok yet again. You guys don't want to miss it. Go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.